excuse me. Welcome back to Case Closed Anime Review Episode 200. No, 200. 160. Yes, 160. This I'm reviewing episode 1000. I think it's 48, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 1048, The Red Sheep's Eerie Game. And chapter 1096, which actually was released last week, but it wasn't translated yet. But now it's up here. Excuse me. This episode, we have the conclusion to this two parter. Where I revealed that, oh, possibly the, the co owner of the restaurant, uh, Kid Gotcha, he may have been the culprit. But nope, he technically isn't. He did rent the costume. That part was true. And they suspect he was the one in the costume for all the all the videos. Nope. It wasn't him. It was a two boyfriend girlfriend from the start of this whole thing. Ami and uh I can't remember his name is Let me look him up on here. It was um It was Ami and Ruta. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where they were the ones who actually were the ones behind the red sheep stuff. But they were not the one who killed the chef. Nope. That wasn't him. They had nothing to do with that at all. As a matter of fact, none of the employees killed them. Yes. As a matter of fact, the whole... And it's also the, the, the blackmail video that... <clears throat> that the girlfriend was actually... Ami all along, and he technically never really had a girlfriend. It was it was Ami posing as another woman. And it was under by Kimiko, uh, Kimo, and an Ami who actually were together. And apparently, she was telling her boyfriend that we think was a boyfriend. No, we, we we just had some fun. It was nothing really serious. Yeah, that's according to her. And. Now, and of course, in this episode, that's when the police finally notice, oh yeah, there's a across the floor, about the fifth million yen, and it's a safe behind a, looks like to be like a shelf or refrigerator, and it's moved by Tagagi and McGuire, which, uh, not McGuire, it was uh, Mori, Mori moved it. And they open the safe, and it's a account book. So, it turns out that the owner of the restaurant, the one who's still there, apparently he's trying to avoid paying well apparently they're not they kept, they kept getting under like under profit so he's well trying to avoid tax evasion and apparently the only person who knew about it was the head the head cook as he called it that was his title he refer chef over head cook and the reason why chemical knew about it knew about that he, he actually he was the one who planned the whole 50 million thing because he planted bugs in the kitchen. And the thing is, he had no idea what his own... Now, here's something I thought was quite weird about this. Is that you have the head chef. You have all these other chefs work with him. And they apparently don't see him. The whole time. It's a small restaurant. I get the fact he's in the kitchen a lot of the time. Heck, you have a freaking cook. Now, Kemigo, he he actually has seen him. Okay, fine. But what about the other two? How come they never saw him? If he was the head chef, head cook, why in the world was he kept in the kitchen all period of time? I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> also, it was a hint from the last episode that does play in the part of this one. So, so they figured out that based on all the evidence, that the whole threat thing was once again another, another bogus lie. So, we have it where possibly that the owner is being arrested for tax evasion but none of them killed the actual person so it turns like him what well, he was going to meet up with well abagashi to get the money but uh it turns out he was knocked out cold by some unknown assailant who took the money and killed abagashi who it turns out to be it was a guy who briefly appeared at the end of the last episode you want to know who it is the costume owner Oh yeah, it also turns out though that that what's his name here? Hiragasha? Yeah, he's the one who designed the costume and apparently he would want to bring it back for the restaurant's five year anniversary. The head chef said no, so 
he did ransom once, but he had nothing to do with stealing it. The Air 2 did it. So, yeah, it turns out the costume owner was the one who actually killed him and took the money. And it turns out the reason why the knife was there was because the head chef put in there was for self-defense purposes. Okay. Interesting. So, the guy ends up killing him. Here's the thing. Didn't never met him before. The only reason why he decided to kill him, because he saw his face. That was it. No, seriously. And he was actually taller. Though, apparently, no one pointed out that he was also kind of chubby, too. So, the only real motive he has here is he wanted the money to help because he was facing bankruptcy. Okay. Interesting. It kind of felt as though he was... Oh, yeah, by the way, Conan kind of figured out that the money was due to a penguin costume being heavier than you than or touching the forehead Conan's head. That apparently was indirect hint. Oh, yeah, the reason why it's low because it's stuff with money. 50 million yen. I'm like, okay. Yeah, so, and by the way, they actually have more dress up as the as the red sheep, and then it's revealed. Then he and post credits, he's trying to sleep. But it's all about sheep. But it turns out he's dreaming about women wearing these sheep heads. I'm like, really? Yeah. Very disappointing conclusion. It's not a terrible episode per se. It just felt like, well, it felt as though this one that they were hinting at somebody else being the murderer. And it's kind of like, okay, so we threw in a random guy we just introduced just last episode. A guy who had, by the way, nothing to do with the case at all. Like, who would have fucked if brought this bad guy back for this next episode? It felt as though that he was just a random guy throwing in this nonsense. A lot of the time when you have these murder cases, usually has a personal stake in the matter. But nope, not really. It was by far one of the most disappointing conclusions I've seen in quite some time. Yes, so after a really good first barter, the second part was very disappointing. Yes, I felt very disappointed after I watched this one. Because I felt as though, like, what was this episode accomplishing? Aside from the fact that all the employees were accused of basically various crimes, the only one who actually didn't commit any crimes was the guy who started all this. You may suspect he he could have been the one who actually committed the murder. Maybe that was planned, but they probably changed the last minute. You can feel as though, like if you if you really look closely based on the story, it the, the script could have changed three or four times, and they could have changed like, oh maybe it was a co-owner, maybe it was Chemical who did it, no, or it could have been it could be any one of these guys. It's almost like they were there completely as a red herring. Now. As for Ami herself, they did immediately point out that she was not the one to cast it when Conan uh, when saw the red, red, red sheep because she had an alibi. Yep. Though, this is something quite weird, though. That, okay, if she was one behind the alibi, then why the heck was the guy worried about his girlfriend being kidnapped by the red sheep? Yes, seriously. So... It felt as though that opening thing for the first thing was completely and utterly pointless. It's like, oh, let's have an alibi for a possible murder. And it turns out people who actually planned the whole red sheep thing had nothing to do with the murder at all. Wow. What a really disappointing two-parter. Yep. Well, lucky enough, we have another episode coming. Lucky enough, it's not a two-parter next time. Nope, it's a standalone episode. But what did I this come weekend? Nope. It actually airs the following weekend. Yep. Alright. Alright, moving on to the newest chapter of the manga, which came out last week, which wasn't translated just recently. It's called The Seek of the Squares, and I kind of predicted this it's three parter. Oyama Gasho. I have a request for you. Can you have your next story arc not be three freaking chapters? Seriously. 
what happened to the days where cases were longer? Why did it have to be three freaking chapters and that was it? Why, it's all your research to freaking do? I mean, yeah, right now you're four chapters away from chapter 1100. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to do a four-part or we're closing chapter 1100. Can we please have that? Why is it not since the FBS City murder case? That was the last one that was actually more than three chapters. Because since that one came out, every single arc since then has been only three chapters. Why only three chapters? Who the heck freaking knows? So we find out who the actual bomber is. So we have, like, okay, deep travel. I found the code is found, found a particular room. I'll go to the room uh, 1412, 1420. So you have Conan and Sarah going to the next floor. And, well. So they have basically McGuire and Tagagi showing up there. They don't really do anything in this case at all. Basically, we have. Aaron taking the credit for the case. Yeah, and then it turns out the guy they just met last chapter, uh, when starting was started, the guy yelling. Yeah, he actually was one. He's he's supposedly the bomber, and then basically he tries to run away, and then he gets knocked out by Mary. Yep, gets knocked down. Conan still hasn't seen her in person. Like okay. So, yeah, they find out there was a bomb there. Yeah, and of course, to get the guy at the building. Then we have this mysterious guy in sunglasses. Who this guy is? Don't know. So they found the culprit, and it turns out it was actually the bellboy. Yep, Conan is the one who eventually finds him. Yeah, Conan is the one who finds him. And figures, basically, has him spill the beans, the whole bombing threat thing. And he's like, oh, it takes a pocket knife. Like, I'm a dealer marijuana. That <laughs> the best university is set, yeah. He's about to vent. And then Conan's like. Collect. Uh, yep. Knocked him out cold. To the police. <laughs> and of course. The guy is like. Conan gun. You mailed me to come to the room. 24 to came in. Ah. This bellboy is the bomber. Looks like he somehow got tired. And fell asleep. He knocked him out. Which I thought was so funny. Mom. You think there is a bomb? Yes. I tampered with it, so it's that you won't detonate anymore. That aside, did you hand that drug man over to the police? Of course, he was quite heavy, so it was tiring. And then the mysterious guy sunglasses takes out what looks to be a pen and just stabs the thing for a fire hydrant. Pops the fire alarm. And like, oh crap. And, like, bomb, and of course, Ever runs outside, and, of course, you have Mary have her ears covered by by Sarah. And then we see this mysterious old man in an auction mask. You get a look? Yes. As if I'm dreaming now. Now, you're probably thinking, who the heck is this guy with the auction mask? Uh, I do have a theory on that. Of who this guy is, based upon how old he looks, and possibly his connection to because he dresses in black. I think that this is the first present appearance of the boss of the black organization. Yes. Why is he an auction? He's extremely old. That's why. Yes. That is my theory who this could be, but who knows? We probably have to wait at least a couple more weeks. We have to wait probably next month. Before, well, before we actually find out what, what, uh, hmm. so as for the next case per se, a uh, when in the world was released, next month, July 27, that's when the next chapter comes out, chapter 1097. Mm-hmm.
yeah, oh, this unknown old man did previously appear in the Detective Play Director murder case, which came back in March of this year. Yep. Am I looking forward to the next case? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll find out exactly... Well... Of when in the world the next case will be. Mm -hmm. Yep, so yeah, that's it for of you. Next one's going to be a comic corner, and then it's on the and on to Baruto, and I'll be here for anime tip. But don't worry, after the Baruto one, it'll be definitely be at least one comic corner. Yeah, one. Okay, next video. Bye.